Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey exploring the world of Docker containers to provide a beautiful dashboard dashi. We will do all this using a Proxmox container, running Docker in your Proxmox home lab server. Dashi is a self-hosted dashboard to help you keep your home lab organized. We will use a Docker Compose file to do our installation and a few YAML configuration files. Nico will demonstrate how to configure Dashi. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. We kindly ask for your support by giving our video a thumbs up. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Docker expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent while fluently speaking the Queen's English. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we're going to do something very nice. We are going to install Dashi into our Proxmox server using a Docker image running inside the Proxmox container. This is what it's going to look like. We have provided a link to our blog post with instructions of how to do this installation. Have a look down below for the link. You may ask what is Dashi? Well, I made some notes here. Dashi is a self-hosted dashboard to help you keep your home lab organized. Dashi is self-hosted, fully customized dashboard that can say can save bookmarks, you can customize your bookmarks in various different ways. Dashi can also integrate with other self-hosted applications so that the data can be displayed on the dashboard. You can use Dashi on all your devices by using the IP addresses as your home page. And let's have a look at the live demo. This is the live demo that Dashi provides. So you can see there are a lot of different options that you can have here as buttons. And you can see these are animated buttons, which give you a very nice looking dashboard. Enough said. Let's start the installation. We need to make certain assumptions here. Firstly, you have to have Docker installed in your Proxmox VMs or in the Proxmox containers. I prefer to call those micro VMs because to me a container is something like Docker. Secondly, we will use the Docker Compose file to do our installation. Although you can run this with a Docker command, we prefer to use the docker compose file. This way we can have more control on the installation. Now if you have not installed docker and portainer in a Proxmox container or what I call the micro VM, please have a look at this video here. We provide a link to that so that you can do that installation. Dashi provides us with all the instructions and information we need. If we look at the quick start guide, this provides you with everything. As I said earlier, we do not want to run a docker run command. They provide information as to how to configure the da Dashi and you will see I have few examples which I've taken from their documentation and already created the file. So this is a fi what a file will look like that you copy into their config file, config.conf.yml. That's the YAML configuration file. They do provide a link to the Docker Compose file. This is what we used. However, we have made a change to this where we have specified a different path to the configuration YAML file. Other than that, ours is based on that file there. This page here is an important document. We will be referring to this a few times. They have provided us with 10 examples of what you can use in the configuration YAML file. 
And I've provided links to other useful resources here as well. As I mentioned earlier, you can run this command, which we do not recommend that you do. I've actually mentioned here, we do not recommend you do the installation this way. We want to have more control over this. This is the Docker Compose file that they provide. However, we want to use a different Docker Compose file as we want to have control over this here. And that's what you'll see in the next section here, section 6. So here we start. What you need to do is you need to open the Proxmox container. So this is our Proxmox container where we have Docker installed in there. So you need to click on the console, expand it. I'm now just going to put the console on the left side and the browser on the right side so that we can continue. You need to run this command to create this folder. However, during testing I've already done that. So you would say copy and paste. I'm not going to do that. As you can see, I'm already in that folder. So you would then just say CD to get to that folder. Now the first thing we want to do is to create the Docker Compose file in this folder. Copy and paste that command. As you can see, I already have that. But you would then copy this content here and you would drop it into here and then you would say control s and control x i'm not going to do that i just want to point out something this is the change we made notice we specified the folder that we just created now opt dashi and in there we put the config yaml file this part here is the local path to the configuration file on our Docker server. And this part here is the internal path to the file inside the Docker container. So when the application looks at this folder here, it will be mapped to this folder here on the server. So as we make changes to this, the container will pick up the changes. So now you say Control s to save and X to exit. We are now going to create a config YAML file. Notice that the first one is called conf1.yml. And the reason for that is you need to refer to this document here where they explain how these configuration files work and they provide us with 10 examples. The first one will be example 1. So this is the content of this file. It comes out of example 1. So let's run this command. And you'll see I've already done that as I was testing the server. But in your case, you will then just copy this. To save you time, I've already put that information in the blog. So you would copy that, and then you would go here and paste. However, I'm not going to paste, as I already have it. After that, Control s to save, X to exit. I'm just going to clear the screen, it annoys me. Having done that, we are now going to create the second one. We are only going to create two in this video. However, I have created more. And this is to show you how we configure this application. And then this, as I said earlier, comes from the second example. To save you time, I've already put the content here. So you just copy this whole thing. This is a big one. Up to there, copy, and then you will have an empty thing here, so you then say paste. And then you will say Control s to save, Control x to exit. Now we have two files. If I do a ls-la, you will see I have more, because I will demonstrate some of the others to you afterwards. So here's the config 1, the config 2. I've added the 3. And I've also added the 10. 
going to be demonstrating this document to you in terms of these configurations. Let's continue. So you need to run this command. We want to take the first one, copy it over onto the conf file. So copy this command, paste it. Now that we've done that, you want to run docker compose up. Copy this command and then paste this command into here. In my case, as I said, I've already installed it, so the installation is quicker. On your case, it's going to download the code first and then start Dashi. Dashi has started, so now we can go and view it in the browser. You will notice that I use Docker Compose app dash D, and that is to run it in detached mode, so that after it ran, I've got control of my terminal again. We explain what that is here. Now let's open this in the browser. So you take your server IP address, colon 4000. And there you have it. I'm now going to change the theme. Dashi comes with a lot of themes. I'm going to change it to Dracula. This is a clean looking interface. And then what you can also do is you can customize this. So if I go here, edit the config, notice it's giving me an editor where I can change things. So I'm going to go and say Nikos, Nikos Dashi, save the changes, and then I'm going to do a preview. Now you can see that I've customized my dashboard. As I mentioned earlier, they provide very rich documentation on their website and this is a whole guide explaining how you can configure it. We did example one, now we are going to look at example two. So now you will run this command, we want to copy the configuration conf2 to conf.yml. So copy this command and paste it in here. Having done that, let's go back to Dashi and now we need to do a reload because we've changed the configuration. Reload. You can see it's busy updating. It'll do this every time you make a change to the conf file. And now you can see we have a nice looking and a very different dashboard. I just want to show something. When you edit your configuration, I'm now going to call this Nikos. Nikos bookmarks. Save. And if we preview, it says Nikos bookmarks. And then it allows me to export the configuration file. So here it gives me, this is now the revised configuration. So if I want, I can copy it from here or I can download it. I'm going to download it to my downloads folder. This is the way I recommend you manage your configuration. Use this editor. Enough said. Let's list what I have. I have conf3, so let's copy that and go back here to this page and do a refresh in the browser and reload. And now we have a very different looking dashboard. I just want to mention there are some themes here that are very nice. I like Cyberpunk. Let's have a look at Cyberpunk. And they've even gone as far as giving us the matrix. Find the matrix in red. It's colorful. As you can see, you have a very rich 
choice of themes and now I'm going to run the conf 10. This was the last example they provided. But let's have a look at this. We refresh the browser. And now we have a really nice looking template with some very nice features. It's given me the time and the temperature and the weather. And it's even given me the Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana prices in pound. Finally, we want to open Dashi in Portana. We provided the link here. This is assuming that you have done the installation as per our previous video that we've linked below. So click on this link. In your case, it's the IP address of your Proxmox container where you have installed Docker and then port 9000. When you open Portana, you, you will get the screen. You click on the Docker container and then you click on containers and we can see that Dashi is running. This provides us with useful information. You see, it shows us that the published port is 4000 and internally it's using port 80. And I am able to click here and to stop, kill or restart. I can restart the container. So you see, when you update your conf.yml, you can actually restart it from here. You can go here and click restart to restart the container. So you have these options that you can do. So that's what we got from containers. Now if we click on images, here we have Dashi, and it is using the latest code in the Docker repository. Thank you for watching this video. Please give us a like and please consider to subscribe to this channel. We have not reached our target yet and we would love to have you subscribe to our channel. And with that, back to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of Docker containers to provide a beautiful dashboard. Dashi after watching this video, we now have a better understanding of how to install Dashi. We demonstrated how to install and configure Dashi. Finally, Nico demonstrated how to open Dashi in Portainer and manage the Dashi Docker container there. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.